god, I want a new car. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic Youth, Peace Attack. It's one of my favorite all-time bands. I've never heard of the band Peace Attack, <laughs> but Sonic Youth is a great song. <laughs> they bridged for me like a period of my life when I was like 15, and I sort of more listened to sort of just dumber punk rock and things like that. And, but this is probably one of the longest-spanning bands in my life that I still like. You know, how many bands do you carry with you? Through, you know, I'm 56 now, so and I still listen to it. For about 40 years, I've listened to it. Black Sabbath War Pigs as dope jam. You want the truth? The first time I heard War Pigs was actually the cover of Faith No More, doing it. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah. War Pigs, awesome. Okay. Can't fuck with that. You can't fuck with Black Sabbath. See, this yeah. is why I love MP3s. <laughs> you can smell them. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I grew up in a working class town and I was a tough guy. <laughs> was? <laughs> was. No, look at the colors I wear now. That's not <laughs> tough. No. You can do uh, it like Lady Stadium. Oh, oh, good guy. <laughs> what is it? Good <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but, you know, besides the war part, Bruce Springsteen's ass on the cover of Born in the USA. Ooh. Huh? Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know what Edwin Starr's ass looks like, but I'm sure it's just as good. It's like two, two Dalmatians <laughs> fighting in the back of his jeans. <laughs> To you. Oh. You too. Hi -yo. <laughs> Sunday Bloody Sunday. Yeah, I, they were, that was like big, uh, big MTV cut. Yeah. Uh, right when MTV started getting into people's homes. I remember that early 80s. And that was like... You're talking about that video of like Red Rocks or something? Or yeah, something? yeah, the flag. Yeah. That one. That oh, was, that that was good. It was a good beat. And I uh, also am interested in the fact that you two is building a skyscraper in Dublin. Because the ego, like, ego potential that just sort of like the parameters of what a band can do now, I'm so excited. Yeah, we were just excited about making, you know, bags for merch, but now we, <laughs> we got to make a fucking building. <laughs> Sometimes something can get so out of control in the United States that that's all you hear about. And the kids that you associate with, like, you, you associate, like, U2 fans, and I can just remember... Just the kids that liked you two in my high school, and yeah. it was just kind of like, ugh, yeah, seen totally a, bumming me out. Seeing a bunch of frat boys going, you want lemon? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you, you yeah. associate the band through like their fans in a way, but then when you can get past that, like, they, they, like early U2 was great, but one, I think one of the greatest things about them is that they can always reinvent themselves. Just like Madonna, she totally manages to reinvent herself. It's like you see her, she's dressed like... Told Dominatrix in the next record, she's wearing a fucking cowboy hat. You're thinking to yourself, "Ha, is this the same person?" <laughs> Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms, the first tape that I've ever bought. Mm. Third grade. Yep, because that was another huge MTV track, probably because they used the word MTV in there. Mm -hmm. Money for yeah. nothing. Yeah, money for yeah. nothing. But those guys are crazy, like the Mark Knopfler. And like, they would wear like the wristbands and the colored headbands and like tank tops on stage. <laughs> yeah, they had a pretty crazy look. Uh, I, had, I have no knowledge of this band at all. Brothers in Arms is a... I couldn't tell you anything about That was a great guitar riff. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. And then they had those that like animation of those like really like like those <laughs> sorry <laughs> those types of animations with the guys just like mm, like like really like robotic. It was it was this was like 1984 or something. So it was, you know 1984 was what one of the first pre-apocalyptic years that I've ever, like it was such a the future begins now I and mean, everything. Sorry, like, Hal, you ev can't do yeah. that. Like everything changes from like dials to buttons, even if they were like primitive buttons, it was like still like I was we are we are embracing the future. David Lee Ross left Van Halen that year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. God among men. 
Jonathan Lennon, <laughs> give peace a chance. Uh, he he is a more, I mean, and feel free to argue me on this, but compared to Bono and Oprah and stuff, there's a he's a real genuine <laughs> kind of. Uh, I think it was the first time in history that John Lennon and Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but but you know he's, he he really was able to use his superstardom for genuine good, and his heart was genuinely in the right place. An interesting fact is that he lived right next door to Joan Cage for a little bit in the 70s in New York when Richard Nixon was the president. And uh, Nixon was really afraid of him because he was like anti-war, kind of leading the anti-war rally. So he, Nixon had his, the FBI, FBI tap his phone and Lennon found this out so he used to have to go to John Cage's house to make phone calls. Pat Benatar, oh, Love is a Battlefield. So true. Yeah, another, this is the truth. Another early 80s rocker. I, I always like Pat Benatar. Um, yeah, me too. I always used to look at the record out there, record cover pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, I think he's great. You know, we played a concert at Next Generation at, Woody Guthrie. At New York University a few weeks ago, which was right in the heart of Greenwich Village, which is where the, the folk scene in the late 50s and Dylan got his start. And, uh, but we all live in New York, but we never go to that neighborhood very much. And we were driving up, trying to find a parking space, and Dave said, I haven't been to this neighborhood for a while. And I said, I haven't been here since Dylan went elected. <laughs> <laughs> There's a funny little fact. Ian is actually the guy that yelled Judas at Dylan's concert when he started to play, and when he came on with a full electric band. Yeah. Judas! <laughs> and then Dylan turned around and said, play it loud, boys. And, to quote Bob Dylan, The times, the times, they are, are changing. Right, you guys? Because they are. Because our album comes out today and shit is changing today. Huh?